Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, part 2 of Capturing Atmosphere, I share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieve the details and chroma in the trees and the sun rays. Be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. This is where we left it in part one. Here's a selection of Karen Dash pencils I'm using for the rich colours in the leaves. I'll be using these few greys to mark out the actual pattern and then glaze over again with but the rich colours this time. And these are initial pencils I'll be using alongside those rich colours. What I try and establish to start with is the lightest lights and the darkest darks and then you've got a chance then of getting the values correct in between. So I focus here on getting the highlight of that tree there and just the white area at the side of the tree where the uh, actual sun's coming through. So that's the lightest area so I'm just mapping that out. There's three stages that I normally do when I do a pastel painting. The first stage is the underdrawing and then the actual rich colour stage where I'm still blocking things in but I'm focusing more on trying to get the values correct and some sort of idea of the colour and the chroma right but the details will be put on later on in this video These are great pencils from Conti of Paris that's the selection of blues I'll be using Um, for the darkness of the trees there, I'm just using brown and blue, which is ultramarine blue dark. And a touch of black if I need to, uh, but I've got to be careful not to make it too dark. Uh, I'm just trying to get some idea of the different values so I can judge the colours better then. I won't put much detail in this part here. All I'm doing is just getting a spot of shade there so it gives me an idea then of uh, the different values I need to be aware of. Uh, all this dirt road will be done in the next video. Doing the same on the other side, just roughing in the actual shadow of what it's going to be. It's not to worry about detail, it's just trying to get a shade in there so I've got something to judge and compare to. Just speeding this little bit up here. I'm only just getting sort of a few colours in there working out what sort of colour I'll need to use but again the details will be done later on in this video and I'll, I'll slow it down for that. Uh, now I'm using dark green and cold red to get the darkest green in there and then I start putting the chroma in so this is the sort of richest brightest green so I'm putting that in. So I've got all these little elements. I've got the darker early elements, I've got the lighter elements, and I've got these little chroma elements. So I've just so getting these really in first really helps them when you start doing the rest of it because you've got something to compare to. It's all about comparing all the time you're comparing different shades to others, different chroma to others. I'd recommend keeping the actual reference image quite small so you can actually see the whole of the image. That really helps for you to actually sense the mood of it, the atmosphere. And just open your heart, let go of the mind, don't overthink these things because there's a lot going off. So don't think it as leaves and trees, just see it as shades and colour and just atmosphere. So just feel how it feels and try and paint that. It sounds strange but the more you let go of thinking the, and more you open up to the senses and open the heart the more it will just flow through you and you'll be surprised that details just take care of themselves, they just happen. 
Now I used different greens, I just picked them up from the collection and just seeing if they worked. And it's always great to find a green that works and is the same colour. But if you find you need to make it warmer, just add a little bit more yellow to the green. If you want it colder, just add a little bit more blue. And that changes it up. If you need to desaturate it or make a shadow of that green, just add a little bit of red. So therefore then you can create chroma by adding more yellow to it and white. And to make a more of a shadow of the green, just add red. The dark green shadows, I've used dark green and a cold red. And I'm now just creating that brightness I need because you've got to get that chroma right and the intensity of that sun behind all that mist. Now I'm using Rembrandt white here because that's really rich in vibrant pigment and when you put that on and glaze over the top that really shines through then so the really bright areas I've used that Rembrandt white. Just slowing it down a little here so you can see I'm using the grey just to lighten things up rather than the white because the grey creates more depth to it when, you, when you're wanting something in the distance. And then I'm glazing over then with burnt sienna and lemon yellow to create a gold. Now with the sun rays I'm painting those in lighter to start with and there's a reason for that because I want that light to shine through the colours I glaze over the top of it because when you start glazing over the top of it it darkens the colour you're doing it over so I'm making it white to start with and then I'll glaze over then with like a burnt sienna and yellow ochre and then I'll go over them with blue to create more of a, a distant feel to it in between the glows within that sun rays. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. I'm constantly moving to different areas so I'm just letting my instinct take over if I feel I need to go to one area I will do that and then I'll get a feeling I need something doing on another area so just let your instincts take it over because when you start altering one thing it changes another so that's why it's always a good idea to do the painting as a whole so you're trying to get that balance all the time creating balance of colour harmony If I try and copy the photograph exactly the same, all I'm going to do is get a copy of a photograph. What I'm trying to recreate is more depth and more feeling that he actually there. And to help you to do that, you've got a great tool which is the heart. So if you open the heart, let go of the mind, because the mind will try and control things, it will try and name things like oh I've got to do some leaves now and I've got to do that and there's a tree trunk there and there's that if you start thinking like that it becomes very stiff and becomes very sort of tight so if you just let go and just see colours atmosphere feeling and the the feeling that you're actually there on that dirt road in that scene Maybe you can hear birds singing, you can feel the breeze, if there's a little bit of a breeze. Just imagine these things and feel as though you're walking through it. And this will help you to uh, change things to make it more realistic. What I'm doing is creating the a pattern of where the leaves are, but it's not exactly the same as a reference. It's just getting a feel for it and then just using lighter colours to start with and then just glaze over with other colours on the top. Just like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons for their generous support every month. I really appreciate it. Helps me with this free content for YouTube. 
Now, if you're interested in joining me on Patreon and want the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please find in the description below more details. Just slowing it down a little now so you can see me putting these dark leaves over the background. Now I'm using a dark green from Karen Dash 719. It's not the correct shade, but I'll change it up. All it is is just trying to get a feeling of where these leaves go. Now I'm putting them very loosely. You can see how far my fingers are away from the point. So if you want to loose mark, best to keep a distance from that point uh, on your pencil. It just creates more of a sort of flow with it, and less tight. Now the colours will be changed up. Like I say, this is not the detail stage at all. All that will be put in at the latter part of this video. So stick with it because you'll see me putting all these subtle details in and I'll slow it down as much as I can. Right, it's time now to actually sharpen certain areas up and put details in because um, the rich colour stage has been put in, now it's the detail stage. Normally I would do this when everything's in, but I'm making this three parts. So uh, I'm putting a certain amount of detail in this video, but I'll be even more so in the next video. But what I'm doing here is tightening up areas so the eye will look for the interest in there so it'll be drawn to it so I'm using light grey and really vivid Caran d'Ache colour here and putting that in and then I'll glaze over that with this like a light green but you can see how it glows as soon as you lay you know you glaze over with another colour it'll it'll glow and then I'm using red and blue to create purples rather than finding a purple I'm creating subtle purples so some areas are bluer than others so you, you can create really different feeling and texture by uh, mixing the, your own colour rather than trying to find a pencil that is the same. Now I'm not thinking about the details I'm still opening my heart but I'm feeling what it feels like to see them in the distance and just being loose with the marks just randomly putting them in but just create a little bit of more interest for the viewers eye to be led there and I'm glazing blues and reds and greens mixing all these colors myself rather than trying to find pencils that match even in these areas here this chroma even if it's distance so I'm trying to create that by adding that sort of bright green and sometimes lemon yellow as well um, but then mixing the greys amongst it as well to create that shadow so it's all a, a play of these different pencils the greys and then glazing over the top and then using the reds uh, it's, it's quite fascinating really to do If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me because this will help the channel to grow. So when you put in the details in, you just a little bit of a spot here and there, a little bit of a highlight, um, just subtle shadows, all these sort of things you've got to sort of look at the image or the reference image as a whole and try and get a balance f for everything and just putting a little bit of a dot for a highlight of a, a leaf what's got sunlight on it it just makes all the difference putting a little bit of a, a detail here just makes it as, as though the whole painting is detailed because the eye fills in the gaps and imagine it's more detailed than it actually is where when you look close at it it's just quite a few different marks here and there but when you look back at it it's, it seems more detailed 
and that's what you need really just putting an odd mark rather than trying to get everything exactly the same just suggestions of marks here and there is all you need here's a little bit of real time just to illustrate that what I've just mentioned just put in that odd little bit of detail here and there and just glaze over them with other pencils just to create subtleties it's just uh, it's very subtle but it does make all the difference I never have a time limit on myself it, my motto is it takes as long as it takes so just relax and be in the moment the power of everything is just here and now in the moment if you try and think too far ahead thinking oh no this is taking a long time I need to be quicker let's you know you, you end up taking shortcuts then just surrender to the here and now relax if you feel yourself getting agitated because of all the details just walk away from it go into another room just sit quiet for a while and then come back all afresh because if you overthink these things and have tunnel vision it'll just cause loads of tension because you'll be worried about all the detail you've got to put in uh, you know just being here and now let go open the heart just let it flow from you you'll be surprised how easy it'll become hope you've enjoyed part two now be look out for part three that will be the next video where I'll be going into depth on how I've done the actual dirt road so I'll be going into all the detail putting the chroma in there and the, and the shadows and then I'll be putting the final details everywhere then so getting the complete balance because I'll leave all the final details to when all the elements are in so that'll be the next video here's how it looks at the end of part two thank you for watching the video right through to the end if you found value in it and you like the video please give it a thumbs up appreciate it, it would help the channel leave a comment and a message in the comments below uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce I've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on and to subscribe click on the circle here it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos thank you so much take care and be well